If you're one of the 8 million people that visit Gulf Shores each year and haven't been on the U.S. Brandon Backcountry Trail, this is the year. Why, you ask? The trail was designated the best recreational trail in the country by USA Today, and we'll share more than 10 stops on the trail today. We bet only about 500 to 1,000 people visit the 28 miles of trails daily. It's truly a gem hidden in plain sight. You won't believe all there is to do on this trail waiting for you and your family to discover, and almost all of it is free. You can even borrow bikes from the park for free using the Bloom Bike Share app. We'll let you know where to find the alligators, the parkour course, Hidden Lake, and more. Let's get started. We know most people go to the beach, but what if the weather is cold or there is a double red flag day? Every time we've been to Gulf Shores, there's been at least a day off the water. Sometimes there is fog, as we encountered, and it's not always sunny in 75. Well, there's plenty to do, and we'll get to all of it. But first, where should you park? There are many trailheads with parking. The beach at Gulf State Park is one of the best we've been to. The main pavilion has a bike rack right at the beach access. With ample parking, you may want to stage here to start and finish your bike ride. There is a nominal parking fee that is waived if you are staying in the park at the lodge or campground. Full bathrooms are located here for your convenience as well as picnic tables and showers. We found this beach quite busy and great for people watching, getting a lot of sun, and exploring the shoreline, but we've never seen the parking full. From the beach, cyclists can head to the Interpretive Center before heading over 182 Alabama's Coastal Connection on an awesome bridge. The Interpretive Center has hands-on experiences for a quick stop before heading into the park. Over the bridge, there's an osprey nest and the entrance to a natural coastal habitat that will give you a new, memorable experience with your family. Look for the pole with a platform on top for the osprey. There are also turtles in the water, and you can see small lizards on the boardwalk duckboards. After that, the trail hits a T. Right will take you into the park and further east. Left will take you to the campground canal sites, Shelby Lake, and the fishing pier. Shelby Lake has many activities for the whole family. Shelby Lake is just inside the shore near the fishing pier. There's a boat launch, kayak launch, and kayak, canoe, and paddleboard rentals. Your brood will love the playground and picnic area. The playground here has large installations for all ages and a smaller toddler area for little ones who are ready to get active. You will find traditional stuff like swings and climbing nets. There are also obstacle setups and other unique gear to play on. Swimming is allowed in Shelby Lake, however, be aware of your surroundings for alligator, snakes, and other wildlife. Restrooms are also available, and there's a dog park and plenty of parking here, too. Do you bike with your dogs? Our labs are too big for cycling and trailers. However, Dog Pond at Shelby Lake is reserved for canines. The dog park is open 8 a.m. to dusk and allows dogs off-leash under voice control. There's a list of dog rules for the dog park, and we'll share a link to those in our description. Park rules outside Dog Pond require dogs to stay on a 6-foot leash. Alligators are present in the park, and dangerous stakes are also known to live in the park. Dogs will find rabbits to chase, and we've seen armadillo roaming around at nighttime. Dogs are prohibited on the beach and in some other areas of the park due to bird protections. Fishing is allowed on all the lakes in the park. A freshwater fishing license is required. Gulf State Park has many fishing spots, both natural and boardwalk docks, and you could spend the whole day fishing the various locations from shore. Have you ever wanted to segue? If you have more time for the park, you can segue the best trail in the nation with the rental shop on Shelby Lake. We'll put details in our description for your reference. You could spend a full day at Shelby Lake and just park your car there. But what if you don't like fishing or hanging out by the water? The trail includes miles of paved and boardwalk surface that allows access to the park. Fortunately, all the items we will discuss today are easily accessed in one day, taking your time, and you don't have to trail ride half the 28 miles to get to this whole list. Another benefit of the trail is the flat terrain. There's very little elevation gain, making it a casual biking experience for the whole family. Number four on our list is the fishing pier. Later, we'll spend time further inland. Just a half mile from Lake Shelby Playground, a little further west, is the fishing pier. Hurricane Sally did a number on the pier. With sustained winds of 105 miles per hour, the Category 2 hurricane traveled over the area slowly, causing significant damage to Alabama. Today, the pier is open for fishing, and saltwater fishing licenses are required and can be purchased online. Again, we'll put a link in our description with more details. There is a nominal fee to visit the pier, and it varies based on a few factors, but less than $10 per person. Included in the pier is a gift, snack, and bait shop, beachside bar and grill, fillet table, and modern bathrooms. On calm days, you can see a variety of fish from the pier, including sharks, rays, manatee, and game fish, including mackerel, sheep's head, and flounder, to name a few. The fishing pier has a large parking lot and bike racks to spend your day there. The advantage is the gift shop, pier, and restaurant provide ways to escape the sun and provide some alternate entertainment. The beach stretches for miles, and walks along the shoreline will take you to hotel properties, space for meditation, and exploring for shells. Now that we are leaving the shore, do you want to know where to find alligators? As you are biking throughout the park, be on the lookout. Here is where we have found them. 
One, alligators can be found on the bike trail. You will see alligators on the Rosemary Dunes Trail. Look for the wildlife sign and fence and you are in the right place. Two, on the Cross Park Trail bridge between Little Lake and Middle Lake, alligators are known to swim between the lakes. Three, on the Lake Shelby Overlook Trail, alligators are known to sun themselves next to the creek. Four, on the Gopher Tortoise Trail, alligators will sun themselves near water. Five, by the campground store at the docks, we've seen an alligator at night. Six, although we've never seen one at Hidden Lake, we know others have. Seven, in the campground, alligators will hang out near any amount of water. Eight, basically keep your eyes open and explore the park and you will see alligators. Please note that feeding any wildlife in Gulf State Park is forbidden and can lead to human injury or park officials killing the animal you fed for the safety of others. Keep your distance and use a zoom lens. Do you think biking is boring? Maybe you need a purpose. With your mobile device, you can use it for the bicycle share like we discussed earlier, and Gulf State Park is a great place for geocaching. Geocaching is searching for containers throughout the world using latitude and longitude and clues provided with mobile apps. There are many websites that support geocaching. Check out a list of geocaching apps in the video description. Gulf State Park embraces the activity and you can bike and hike with purpose geocaching throughout the park. You never know what you might find, but you will definitely discover logbooks to autograph and a fun adventure treasure hunting. As you spend your day in the park, you may get hungry. If you haven't packed a lunch, check out the Woodside Restaurant. This destination is probably the furthest away from everything else on the northwest side of the park. It is a great place to get off your bikes and eat lunch inside or outside under the trees. They have casual dining where you order at the counter and your food is delivered. Outside, you will find yard games including cornhole, ping pong, volleyball, and fire pits if you just want to chill. Woodside also has live music. The restaurant has fantastic homemade chips and the specialty dips might be even better. If your stomach can handle it, appetizers including onion rings are great. They also have a variety of sandwiches and salads to fuel the rest of your ride. Their specialty cocktails and drinks will complete the experience. Time to burn off some calories. From Woodside Restaurant to Al's Parkour Challenge and Hidden Lake, which we will talk about next, is less than five miles. About halfway to Al's Parkour, on the Gulf Oak Ridge Trail, is a beautiful forest covered in Spanish moss. Riding through the area is magical and worth the ride around the back side of the park. You'll also see many benches and swings if you need a place to stop. Most of them are donated as memorials. A beautiful place to walk a minute and take pictures is an overlook where you can capture landscapes like this. View over the park and the trees with the towers on the gulf in the distance. What if you are out riding or jogging by yourself? This is a great ride for listening to books or podcasts. With no vehicle traffic, the trail is perfect for listening to audible.com. Check out our description for a free trial cancel anytime offer with Amazon to try Audible today. Heading east will continue through the forest and lead you to Al's Parkour Challenge. Al Bradley, as the sign shares, was a tireless advocate of the trail. Maybe someone who knows more about Al could comment below. This park has a great installation in his honor. The wood and rope is set up to climb and challenge young adventurers. There is also a lawn for playing and running around. A bit of frisbee is a good add to your pack for here or the beach. You'll also find a little amphitheater for impromptu shows and benches to relax and watch your brood play. Hidden Lake is just to the north. It is truly hidden. A left turn either before or after owls will take you there. The lake is teeming with fish and there are some big monsters. We have fished there a few times and the lake is a well-established balanced habitat. Around the lake are bench swings and a hammock park if you need an afternoon nap. Bring your own hammock and tie them up to two of the many wooden poles they have installed. There is also a shelter with picnic tables if you would rather pack a lunch or snack. Be on the lookout for turtles, snakes, and alligators. You will also want to watch where you are stepping as the fire ants will bite. Even with those last comments, this is a must-see lake if you want a serene environment to meditate and hang out. We are making our way around with only a couple more stops to make. Traveling east from Hidden Lake will take you to a choice. There's a long route further east called Rattlesnake Ridge. This is for people who want to put miles in or are staying outside the park in Orange Beach. It can loop around after the Orange Beach City Hall to Camp Man Road using Road 161, Alabama's coastal connection, for a brief time. There is parking where 161 intersects with the Catman bike trail. For a family, it is probably best to skip this route and instead continue south to catch Catman Road there. At the T, you will head west to the campground where there are many activities. Are you enjoying the bike ride around Gulf State Park? Subscribe today to build more family memories to last a lifetime. The Swimming Pool Nature Center Tennis Courts and Campground Store are located on Middle Lake inside the campground. If you are driving there, is a $2 fee per vehicle to get into the campground if you aren't staying in the park camping at the park lodge or in a cabin. Bike riding into the park is free. We don't know if the pool is heated, but it always seems like a better alternative to the ocean when the weather is cool. The splash pad is a lot of fun too. For registered campground and cabin guests only, the pool area is in a protected location, maybe sheltered by the pool entrance with less wind. Tennis and pickleball courts are next to the pool and are used often. 
There are four tennis courts at the facility. However, two are set up for pickleball and have basketball hoops mounted on the fence. Tucked away behind the pool and nature center are horseshoe pits, beach volleyball, swings, and monkey bars. The nature center gets good reviews, and they always have something interesting to share about the reptiles, birds, fish, other wildlife, general habitat, and conservations in the area. Taking the other route, going east on Catman Road, will take you to the Butterfly Garden and Boulder Park. Here you can take another break and enjoy climbing on the boulders and running around the field. The landscaping here is worth a stop. The flowers and trees are beautiful. There is also a screened-in shelter with porch swings on Rosemary Dunes Trail, which connects to Catman. You will find restrooms and a bike tuning station adjacent to the Butterfly Garden. From here, Rosemary Dunes Trail goes through the park to an eagle habitat, alligator viewing site, and ending in a great boardwalk ride through the wetlands to the Gulf State Park Beach Pavilion in about two and a half miles. To learn why we'll never go back to Gulf State Park and more on the campground, watch this video next.